Hey, how's it going guys? In this video, I'm gonna talk about what it means to have a reprobate mind. I'm gonna talk about strong delusions and how people get turned over to Satan and the many ways that people can be turned over to a strong delusion and a reprobate mind. I'm gonna talk about how people basically are given over to Satan and when God turns people over and I'm gonna talk about through experience and what I've seen and what the scripture says about it. Now everyone has a certain point in time. There's a certain point in time for everybody. Uh, unbelievers, believers, everyone. That God has set, uh, that God knows when somebody has walked far enough with them or as many chances as the Lord gives someone, the Lord knows that uh, that amount of chances he's given and how many he's given to each person. But no one else truly knows that. Now once a person gets to the state of being turned over to a reprobate mind or a strong delusion, it's very rare and it's very hard to come out of that and most people never come out of that. They just remain lost and they get destroyed. Now some can come out if they truly repent and God has mercy on them, but it's rare. Most people never come out of that reprobate state, that uh, strong delusion, because it's a curse from God. Now, in the Bible, a good example of this is uh, King Saul in 1 Samuel. We see that Saul was given uh, orders, he was given commandments from God. Saul was given these commandments to carry out from God. To go and kill uh, the Amalekites and their kings and let nobody live, let nothing live, kill everything, kill the cattle, kill the king, let nothing stand. Now Saul disobeyed this, and we see that God repented that he made Saul king, and so what happened was Saul wasn't really repentant for his sin. Saul did not repent at all. He was just, he had a, a worldly sorrow. And we see because of it that God took the Holy Spirit away from him and he was given an evil spirit. Now this evil spirit was tormenting Saul. It was basically uh, turning him double-minded. He was going insane. He was uh, eaten up with jealousy. He was trying to kill David when he saw David was going to be made king. And one of the characteristics you notice in his, in his state of insanity was that uh, he would continually try to kill David. And there was times he would even tell David he's sorry afterwards and... He would apologize and he'd go back to trying to kill David again. And he would apologize and, and say sorry and go back to trying to kill David again. And what's interesting to me is that I've seen other people even. I've seen people do the same thing to me and to others that I've known. They'll say sorry continually and they'll go back to doing the same thing again. And they'll say sorry again and they'll go back to attacking or they'll go back to slandering. And it's characteristic of being turned over to Satan, being turned over to devils. Because that spirit of insanity, that spirit of double-mindedness is another hallmark indicator of someone who's been turned over because they're not of sound mind. They're unstable in all their ways. They have that spirit of insanity. And I've seen many people go off the rails from experience. They just completely depart from the faith. 
they go into talking about flat earth and all this other junk and stop talking about Jesus and this is what it is to be turned over to a reprobate mind, to be turned over to devils because of disobedience and because of not uh, heeding conviction of the Holy Ghost and not repenting from sin. God does these things. And I'm going to read here in Isaiah. I'm going to read here Isaiah 66. Um, 66, 4. I also will choose their delusions and will bring their fears upon them, because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear, but they did evil before mine eyes, and chose that in which I delighted not. I'm also going to read here uh, Isaiah 66, 5. Hear the word of the Lord, ye that tremble at his word. Your brethren that hated you, that cast you out for my name's sake, said, Let the Lord be glorified, but he shall appear to your joy, and they shall be ashamed. Now this clearly says people get turned, God chooses their delusions. God can choose anybody's delusions and turn them over because they would not hear his voice, they wouldn't heed the conviction of God, and they wouldn't repent. So this is another clear indicator um, that somebody's been turned over. Well, this is another way someone gets turned over. To reprobate mind it's by not heeding his conviction and listening to the Lord like I talked about Saul and another way is by not loving the truth we know that in 2nd Thessalonians it says uh, it basically says we need to love the truth to be saved there's that verse that says um, because people didn't love the truth that they might be saved, uh, God give them over to, gave them over to a strong delusion that they may, might be damned who had pleasure in unrighteousness. So people who have pleasure in unrighteousness and they don't love the truth are turned over. And we see this a lot with many people who don't believe in... Uh, who don't believe the truth of the gospel, atheists, people who don't believe in the truth of repentance, like uh, greasy gracers, we see them turned over all the time. We see this people just vain babbling and vain jangling because they're turned over to speaking unprofitable things. And most of them are going to stay in this state. Most of those teachers of greasy grace uh, doctrine of you don't have to repent. All you have to do is, is have this intellectual belief and faith in Jesus and you're okay. These people are turned over to strong delusions because they love not the truth that they might be saved. But they have pleasure and unrighteousness. This is one of the many examples, and I've seen this take place in people's lives. And it's, it's scary, guys, because it shows you how true the Word of God is and how every verse, every single verse in this Bible comes to pass. And you can see it if you look at these people who are turned over. They're basically under the judgment and the wrath of God because they love not the truth and this is why we need to take heed that we love the truth and we love correction and uh, rebuke whenever we're going r the wrong way and it's especially important that we heed the conviction of the Holy Spirit because this is a very dangerous spot to be and some people have even blasphemed the Holy Ghost. We really don't know who has or who hasn't. 
but God really knows and he knows how much mercy and grace he'll have on each person individually. We don't know that, but this is a scary place to be, guys, I'm telling you. And I'm going to read here uh, Romans. I'm going to read here Romans 1, 24. Or I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to read here Romans 1, 18. to uh, Romans 32. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his, his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, and to birds, and four-footed beasts, and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the Creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lusts one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God and their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, and merciful, who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Okay, we see there that um, people are obviously given over to reprobate minds because they don't receive the love of the truth and they have hold the truth in unrighteousness. We also see people, these same people, do, do not like to hold God in their knowledge or glorify God. So God gives them over to the lusts of their hearts. And for most of these people, it's game over. And some of them, I believe, will repent and they can repent. But it's it won't be easy. Of course, the Lord can pull anyone out of these delusions, but he's got to have the mercy and grace to uh, open their eyes and let them see the truth. And like I said before, guys, I've seen people turned over to doing and saying unprofitable things, just foolish things. And this is what it, it's like to be turned over. It's it's a scary place to be, guys, and if you're getting conviction for a sin, any kind of sin, 
this is where it starts. You must repent for that sin immediately. When you have some sin in your life and you're uh, being convicted, you got to go before the Lord, uh, pray for it. Pray about it, get deliverance, and you got to repent and turn from it. Because if you continue and do not heed the conviction, God will give you over. This isn't maybe, this isn't he might do it. He will turn you over to that sin. And you will wax worse and worse and worse into more worse and horrible... Uh, just wicked, perverse ways with that sin if you do not repent. And I've seen it before and it's happened to me, guys, when I was into pornography before I came to the Lord. I was just getting deeper and deeper into that. And you guys, you'll just want more and more perverted stuff. And this is what happens. The Bible says you will you'll wax worse. People will wax worse if they continue in that sin and there's no telling if they'll ever come out of it. And you don't want to be there guys. If you're in that state, what you want to do is repent and forsake it immediately. And you always want to keep that contrite, repentant heart and that repentant way in your walk. You want to keep walking out your uh, walk in fear and trembling and repentance. Because this is what's going to keep you from uh, going down that road of reprobation, down that road of s strong delusion and being turned over to demons. Because people need to walk out a walk of repentance and continually seek deeper inside themselves, look for what they need to fix with the Lord, and so they don't get stagnant. And these are ways we can avoid this, guys. And like I've said before, it's it's just supernatural. I've seen people who I've known and trusted, who supposedly loved me as fellow brothers, fellow sisters, just turn their back and backstab me, you know, and backstab others that I know. And then they'll say sorry and they'll go back to doing the same thing again because they've been turned over just the way King Saul was turned over. Just the way he would tell David sorry and go back to trying to kill David again. It's the same thing. It's the same spirit of insanity that God gave over to Saul and it still happens to people today guys and this is why we need to fear God we need to take our walks with the Lord seriously and we need to repent quickly if we fall we need to repent and get back up because a righteous man will fall seven times but the wicked will just fall away into mischief this is what the Bible says, guys. And God is serious, and we need to believe His Word and take that seriously. Anyway, guys, I wanted to make this video to bless you and talk about what I've seen with this and my experiences and how serious this is for us as believers. I hope you have a blessed night. I'll talk to you later.